Good job. Hi, YouTube. I am here today on a Sunday afternoon um, with the help of my four-year-old running the video camera. And I just got done prepping for our homeschool week coming up this week. And I just wanted to share kind of my thought process with you so you can see how all of my different organizational systems that I've shared with you kind of come together and how that looks for our week. Um, so I have in front of me my year at a glance so I know what we're gonna be working on this week. I have my son's um, weekly checklist that's all filled out. And then I have behind me our um, file crate system and our weekly folders. So I'm gonna kind of just show you how all of that stuff looks and kind of how I get everything put together for the week. Um, I've been down here for a little over an hour, and I'd say this is pretty typical um, to get everything set up for the week, and that includes filling water cups and talking to my mom and texting with a friend while I've been doing all of this kind of stuff. So if I was really focused, I could be done in less than an hour, but I don't usually have less than an hour of um, focused time. So I'm going to just walk you through the process, and you can see kind of how everything works together. Okay, can you pause? Okay, so I'm back over here on this side of the camera, and this is kind of how I go through my whole thought process. So the first thing that I do is I get out my year at a glance sheet, and um, we are on week four. So you can see here, it's the beginning of August, which I can't believe it's the beginning of August, and I can't believe I would be going back to school soon if I was still in the classroom. Um, but this shows me what I'm going to be doing. So I took that sheet and I took my son's weekly checklist um, and I started getting ready to fill everything out. I started first with putting in our things that we have coming up so he knows what to expect for this week. And then you'll notice, if I can line these up so you can see both weeks, there's week four um, right here at the top. Everything is listed in order. So Bible is here, Bible is the first thing on this chart. So as I'm going through, then I'm going to come over here to my file crate. This is our file crate system and I've already done this but I'm just kind of showing you what my process would be. I'm going to find week four and I'm going to grab both the green and the purple folder. So that's both my kids and I'm going to take out all of their papers that are in here so that I can be going through them as I'm filling out my um, weekly checklist. Then once their folders are empty they go back in the week four folder down here and this is my favorite part is this whole folder then gets moved to the back so I know that it's done everything is out of there and I know that next week we'll be starting on week five so we're already clear to the end of our tabs over here which makes me happy um, because we have to get to here for a break so it seems crazy that we're already gonna be almost halfway through our first quarter so I have all of his worksheets out I'm going to bring them back over here to my table with me and then as I am filling them out, so let's take Bible for example, um, I wrote down which pages they're going to be doing each day. Then um, we have eight folders over here, so there's four for each kid. So you notice there's two day ones, the pink sparkly one is obviously my daughter's and then my son's and then they each have a day two folder day three and so on. Um, so then I would take his Bible worksheets and put them here in the front of his folder. This is what I'm hoping he will be able to do at some point in the next couple of years. Look at what I've written down here, grab his whole pile of worksheets, and put them out in the order that he wants to do them. As a first grader, I don't expect that yet. Um, we kind of talk about things and he really makes a lot of decisions on what day he wants to be off and we go through the schedule and so he kind of knows what amount of work he's going to have to do, but I don't expect him to split this all out on his own yet. Um, so I put their work in there and their daily folders. So then I just go down to the next subject. So that would be reading. That one's easy to fill out and there's no paperwork. Copy work. Then um, a lovely subscriber mentioned this because if you've used my... Um, weekly checklist, you'll know that on days that I knew for handwriting that he wasn't going to do things, I grayed these out on my computer before I printed them. So every week those two days are grayed out. Um, but sometimes we have things that we aren't doing every day. And so she suggested, and I loved and stole her suggestion to use washi tape. 
um, on days like he's not going to do grammar here. He won't do science and history. I know we are going to be out tomorrow morning, um, but it's not going to be our off day. So I kind of stacked my non-subject days tomorrow so that we have a little bit less to do. Um, and then we can have more time when we're here at home. So I picked up a roll of washi tape and I'd like to find something in a solid color, but this is Scotch brand. There you go. This is the Scotch Expressions. I think I got it at Walmart. Um, this happens to be like the perfect width to fit in these squares without cutting them down. Um, so I'd like to find something that's a little more boyish for him, but it totally works for right now. Um, so I loved that idea. Thank you for mentioning that. I totally stole it. Um, so I just go through and this is what his whole checklist looks like when it is filled out for the week. So you can see the days that we don't do certain subjects. Um, it goes pretty quickly when everything is already in this week at a glance. The only thing that I'm finding takes me time is science and history. And I'm going to pause real quick and grab my books so that you can kind of see and I'll tell you why that takes me a little bit longer. Okay, here's our science book. I'm going to try and do this so you can see and not be too shaky. Um, this is the God's Design for Life series. We are working on the world of plants. And so what I do then on Sunday when I sit down, I've already determined what lessons we're going to do, which is going to be 10, 11, and 12. Um, but I haven't really made a lot of plans. And I've mentioned before that this book is really geared towards third grade and up. And my son is a first slash second grader. Um, so I'm not doing things exactly the way they have them laid out in here. So each Sunday, then I look at the actual lessons that we're going to do. And then I go to this blue box, which is, if it will focus, um, what they recommend for the younger grades, third, fourth, fifth grade. And I look at that and I see if that's something that's going to work for us. Um, and if it is, then I'll get the materials and make sure that we can do that experiment. If I feel like it's a little bit above him or I want it to be something that my four-year-old can join in on, then I check Pinterest and I find something else that we can do. So I haven't done all of that work ahead of time. I am trying to take good notes um, somehow so that when I do this again with my littles that are coming up, that I'll kind of remember what I was doing. So that takes me a little bit of time. Um, and then for history, we are using this one, which is the Diana Waring um, History Revealed series. This is the elementary activity book that goes with it. And if I open to, we're on unit one, which is creation and the flood. She gives a lot of suggestions in here. Um, and so I have created my own Excel spreadsheet. If you haven't figured out by now, I love Excel spreadsheets. They're one of my favorite things to do. Um, I created this little unit outline and so it kind of tells me week one, week two, week three, week four because these are all the same unit. We've been studying the creation and the flood for four weeks um, and up at the top here I kind of put, I'm having focus issues today, there you go. Um, the introduction, what we're going to do, week two is explore and discover, week three is hands on, and then week four is expression. And so I just have kind of given myself every day some of the things that we've done, um, some of the things that are actually listed in the book. We are working on our timeline, so I kind of put some of that information in. So I'm kind of doing this for each one as well, so that again, when I go back with littles, I kind of remember what I did this first time around. So those two subjects have taken me the longest, and that's probably really what takes, I don't know, maybe half of my planning time is just looking ahead to find out what we're actually going to be doing on those days. Um, so that really gives me my plan for the week. So when I am done, I'll put my books away here that I was using. Then all I have is his checklist that sits over on his side of the table. And I have their folders that I will give them each day and they'll take their work out of it. Um, when my first grader is done with his work, there is a black box over there that sits right next to the board. Um, and there's work in there, if you can see it. And so he's just putting his finished work in that black box. And then I'm going through every couple of weeks and keeping the things that I want to keep and then tossing the things that aren't going to go in his portfolio. That's probably been my biggest um, 
not a struggle, but learning curve with this whole file crate system because now I have all of these loose pieces of paper. And so I'm trying to figure out how to do a really nice portfolio for him and not keep too much stuff because I'm on a mission to get stuff out of my house, um, but keep the things that he needs to keep. So this here that you're looking at is pretty much our whole daily setup. My teacher's manuals are all there. Um, his all about spelling cards are there. That's their supply tub. They pretty much have everything they need right there in that little caddy. So um, it's been going well for these four weeks that I've been planning so far. So I'll let you know if we have any other updates or changes to make. If you have questions, um, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments and check out my blog if you're looking for any of these resources for you to print and let me know if there's anything else you guys want and I will definitely try and get that done. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get updates when we do new videos. Thanks so much for watching. Happy homeschooling.